have S and we also have N the sample size so we can actually construct this test statistic so let's start off with the hypothesis itself so step one so this is our hypothesis test so our hypothesis our hypothesis test has five stages okay so our hypothesis test is gonna have five stages step one is to define the hypothesis itself so the hypothesis we know has two positions okay it has a null position okay and it has an alternative okay now what's really important is this is that the only thing that we can ever prove okay uh, is 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 always going to be based off the evidence it's always going to be any proof that we do is always going to be based off what we've observed with respect to the evidence which is respect to the sample okay and the only thing that we can ever prove is the alternative and we can only ever prove that if we actually move away from the null position in favor of the alternative so what we want to try to prove should always be our alternative is really what i'm saying here now, if we look at the last part of this question here, it says, the question itself, I suppose, it says, test, everything else has given us information. It says, test at the 5% level of significance the hypothesis that the average price charged by Irish fuel company outlets is higher than the claim made by government. So actually, what this is saying is, what we'd like to try to prove is, is there evidence to suggest that the average price, the true average price of the population, is bigger than, is higher than, the claim made by government? Now, the claim being made by government is that it's at €1.63, okay? So is there evidence to suggest that we have a population mean that's bigger than €1.63? Now don't forget, the hypothesis is like flipping a coin, a funny type of coin. We've got two particular situations we've got one situation on one side of the coin and we've got another situation on the other side of the coin but the coin always covers all possible scenarios now in respect to the population mean here where I we're in the hypothesis the alternative we're saying that the population mean is greater than one euro 63 which means that the null must cover all the other possibilities which are that mu is less than or equal to one euro and 63 cent okay Another thing to keep in mind is that the alternative always tells us the directionality of the test. Okay? Always tells us the side of the distribution where we will reject from. Okay? And in this case, you can see the arrow is pointing. It's pointing in it's pointing to the right hand side. Okay? So actually this is a right tail test. But now anyway, step two, step two of our test is to define our significance level. So our significance level is, well, our significance level has already been given in the question. The significance level is alpha is equal to 5%. Now 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05. So in this situation here, we have alpha is equal to 0 0.05, okay? Step three now is to, is to try to ascertain how far is the sample evidence away from our hypothesized center of our distribution? The centre of the distribution being the equality part of the null hypothesis. So the null is saying that the population mean is less than or equal to 163. So the equality part of this is that mu is equal to 163. Okay? So how far is our evidence away? Well, here's the test statistic tells us how far the evidence is, the X bar is away from the hypothesized centre in standard unit terms. So what we have to do here is we construct our test statistic or we calculate our test statistic okay in this case we're going to have t which is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n is going to be x bar is 165 so it's 1.65 minus mu which is 1.63 divided by s well s is the standard deviation which is 0 0.05 which needs to be divided by which needs to be divided by the square root of n, which is the square root of the sample size, which is 35, okay? Now, when we do that calculation, and I'm just going to do it all in one go on my calculator, that's if I can actually find my calculator here, and here it is, okay? So I'm just going to put the numerator in first. So I'm going to put the numerator in brackets. It's open round brace, 1.65. Hopefully you can see that there. Maybe you can see it over here, 1.65, minus 1.63 close the round brace so that's my numerator okay and I'm gonna say that that's divided by it's divided by this fraction so let's calculate this fraction so it's open round brace 0 0.05 which needs to be divided by the square root of 35 okay and I'm just gonna my cursor still under the root so I'm just gonna shift it to the right and I'm gonna close off my bracket okay and I'm gonna hit equals and I get a test statistic of 2.3 
2.664. So let's say it's three decimal places, the test statistic is 2.366. Okay? So that's how far in standard units the evidence is away from the hypothesized center of our distribution, okay? Of the population distribution. Okay. So the next step now to, is what's known as the, the critical value step, okay? Uh, so step four is to identify our critical values. Our critical values, okay? Our critical values are these demarcation points on our on our curve, okay? That allow us to ascertain whether our test statistic is sufficiently far away from the center of our distribution to be significantly different, okay? Now we're using a t-distribution here, okay? It's a t-statistic, so the t-statistic has a distribution. There's a there's a distribution associated with with each sample size, which specified by which is specified by the degrees of freedom, which is the sample sample size minus one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find our critical values. So I'm just going to draw our curve. So our curve looks something like this. It's going to be a T distribution, which is a which is a bell-shaped curve. It's going to be centered on zero. Okay. Now my alternative hypothesis, okay, the alternative here has a directionality associated with it. If I just put if I just put a line through here, you can see I get an arrow. An arrow is pointing to the right. So actually that's where my that's where my rejection region needs to be. My rejection region region needs to be in the right hand tail. So actually what I'm actually asking here is this is that I need to figure out what this cutoff point is here. What is this critical value, okay, that has a certain amount of area to the right hand side of it. Okay? The amount of area that's going in here is the level of significance. So it's 5% of the total area under the curve. So the area inside here is 0 0.05. Okay? So the question is, what the hell is what is critical value on a t distribution? Okay? What critical value on a t distribution okay, 